Hello everyone and welcome to episode 25 of my World of Warcraft Let's Play. We are playing as a human mage leveling from level 1 to level 60 and we are currently level 27. And really quickly before we get started on our adventures today, I want to check out our tailoring. I did a little bit of tailoring. I used up a bunch of wool we got and a bunch of wool that I got from one of my other characters that I play as outside of my Let's Play series. And we are now tailoring 128 and we have unlocked silk cloth. So the big thing that we are going to be looking at next, someone is buffing me up, I'll go ahead and buff them up as well. So the next thing that we are looking at for tailoring really that I'm super interested in are these spider silk boots that are much better than what we currently have equipped but we need more silk cloth for that and we also need to get some other ingredients as well and I might get most of these ingredients on my other character that I'm currently playing as. It is 11 my time, 2 a.m. rum time right now so the town hall is going off and I also have some mail right here which is just some extra wool cloth from my other character that I'm playing, my druid that I'm currently playing. But let's go ahead and get started on our adventures for this episode. Where today we are heading west to Ravenhill Cemetery. We have some quest markers on the eastern side of this map, but for the most part we are going to be spending some time over here in Ravenhill, where I have this quest from Abercrombie to deliver some juice to him that we made several episodes ago, and then we will be working on our Totem of Infliction quest, our Nightwatch quest, and our Proving Your Worth quest, which all three of those has to do a lot with killing different mobs around the cemetery in three distinct areas of the cemetery, so we're going to be spending a lot of time around there and fighting undead. But first, let's go ahead and go to Abercrombie and we can deliver this juice. So here we are in Ravenhill Cemetery and I guess I'll go ahead and fight some of the undead on the way to Abercrombie instead of running around them where we can start fighting not these skeletal horrors but if I see any that we need to fight we'll go ahead and run in like these skeletal fiends right there. There's two of them right there. I think they are mages and they'll cast frost bolts. Not entirely sure, maybe they're rogues. I see they have daggers. That doesn't necessarily mean they're rogues, but they are. Ooh, we got him stunned there. He has frostbite where he's frozen in place. So this is very good for us and he's indeed running towards us. So we'll be able to get a lot of extra damage off on him and finish him off. And he only hit us once and that is one out of 15 needed for that quest. So let's go ahead and just fight a few more here and then we can work our way back over towards Abercrombie. This cemetery has such good vibes, it's so dark and like spooky here and there's a ton of undead around and then there's just a giant carrying recluse just wandering over there. It's definitely intimidating. There are also grave robbers here and a level 35 elite undead that we will be fighting at some point for a very special quest. So I just fought all the skeletal fiends in this small area, the recluse is on me right now, but let's go ahead and come over here and we can fight some of these flesh eaters and other ghouls that we need for our totem of infliction quest. And now that we're a little closer to Abercrombie the Hermit, let's go ahead and run into his little shack here and we can go ahead and give him his delivery. And he says, a thousand thanks Athos, you warm an old man's heart with your foolish, I mean, your kindness. Here you are friend, take this as a token of my gratitude. Whoa. What does he mean by foolish here? I wonder what is going on. I actually don't entirely know what's going on here, I'm being completely honest, I'm actually a little confused. I live so far from the protection of town, it's a wonder the ghouls and the walking dead haven't eaten me. In fact, just yesterday, a pack of bone chewers was pounding on the walls of my house. I want to make an effigy, a kind of scarecrow for ghouls. To do that, I need some ghoul ribs. You can get them from flesh eaters, bone chewers, brain eaters, rotted ones, and plague spreaders. Get the ribs for me, and I will repay you with coin. So I was just fighting some ghouls, so let's go ahead and come right back over here, and we can continue our totem of infliction quest while also working on this ghoulish energy quest that we have here. I was trying to think back on the previous quest that we have done with the Hermit and I can't entirely remember all the quest text from it and I don't remember seeing anything that was a little suspicious and I don't entirely remember this quest chain from when I've done it before so there's a little bit of a head scratcher there and I'm wondering what's going to happen and I have a feeling that I maybe shouldn't be continuing working on these quests that might not be the best decision for us to do. So I have been continuing my questing experiences on my Night Elf Druid that I've talked about a couple of episodes now. And I was reflecting on my opinions of questing and the differences between questing and the different eras of World of Warcraft. And I've kind of learned that I think the 
race that is alone on their continent, so it is Night Elves on Kalimdor, they're completely alone, where all the three other members of the Alliance are on the Eastern Kingdoms, and then for Horde, the Undead are alone in the Eastern Kingdoms, and all the three other members of that faction is in Kalimdor. I think the race that is kind of outnumbered definitely has a weaker questing experience in Vanilla WoW compared to like Wrath Lichkin, where I think the changes introduced in Wrath Lich King really did a lot to kind of add on to like that race's experience, especially the Night Elves, where I have been playing through Vanilla WoW as a Night Elf, and I was really wanting to kind of spend my entire time as a Night Elf in Kalimdor, and then I wanted to do a playthrough where I do both Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms at the same time, and then I wanted to do a playthrough of Night Elves where I run to like Stormwind and at level one and I do like North Shire Valley and all that stuff and I go through that experience because that's something I've never done before and I kind of wanted to compare and contrast like all my experiences however with like my Night of Druid that I'm playing right now it's really really kind of like difficult to just level in just Ashen Vale and Stone Talon Mountains getting through Teldrassil obviously and getting through Darkshore as well were like really easy experiences but once I got to level like 20-ish like 21, 22 ish, and I started doing a lot of quests in just Ashen Vale and in Stone Talon Mountains as well. I am completing all the quests much faster than I am leveling up, and that's like an experience that is mostly reserved for like the level 50s, uh, maybe like late 40s, where like you definitely start running out of quests and you gotta start like grinding mobs or doing dungeons and stuff like that in order to level. But I'm experiencing it like super early on, and it's not too big of an issue because I can just go to like Eastern Kingdoms where I've been doing like quests and weapons, and like it's completely fine. I'm not like running out of quests at all when we're looking at like looking at both Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor. Door. but when I'm just experiencing just Kalimdor it's definitely a little bit of a struggle where in Wrath Lich King I feel like it's not as big of a struggle uh, I'm definitely a little hazy on like the Night of Leveling experience through Wrath Lich King I did start one and I'm planning on playing it more but I've been mostly focused on playing like my vanilla WoW Night Elf right now I'm kind of like all in on that character right now but once I get around to playing through the Wrath Lich King one I will understand it better but I do definitely feel like based off my memory and like what I know about the zone and Rathlich Keen, it is definitely a better experience starting in like the Burning Crusade. And then the same is true for Undead as well, where I feel like there weren't too many changes to like the Undead leveling experience. However, it does feel much, much better in Rathlich Keen for whatever reason than it does in Nella Wow. The Undead leveling experience specifically being only in the Eastern Kingdoms where you're not going anywhere else in the world. You are just spending time in like the zones in like Lordaeron and then also down further south in the Eastern Kingdoms as you reach higher levels as well. So I would say on that end of the discussion that I've been having about like Vanilla Wild leveling versus Wrath of the King leveling, I think that's definitely like a tick for Wrath of the Lich King where leveling as like a human or a dwarf or like an orc and a troll or a tauren or a gnome <laughs> Are like all really good experiences if you don't want to go to the other continent and you just want to stay in your like region of the world where playing as a night elf or undead you definitely have to go over but that's not necessarily true in wrathlich king as much at least and of course it is good to be able to go to like the other continent and do quests there and i do that with pretty much every single character that i do but i was specifically wanting to do one where i just stay in kalimdor and i'm not really able to do that which again is like an okay thing, but wasn't necessarily what I was going through with like that specific playthrough and this rogue just zoned in or came on stealth right in front of my eyes, okay. In hindsight, I'm starting to think I should have probably gone to Abercrombie first, I didn't realize what the next quest was. But we'll just kill a few more ghouls than we need if we were just doing the total of reflection anyways. It's good experience, I've gained like 4 bars so far this episode. And I was just randomly fighting here, and then suddenly all these ghouls started attacking me. Even though that warlock was the one fighting them, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Might be some sort of bug, but I'm just gonna run away now. I was confused there, I don't know what's happening. I'm gonna just go over here and fight some ghouls over here. I think since I still have this oil of Olaf left over, I'm gonna go ahead and use this and increase our armor by 50, because I think now is a good time for us to just have a little bit of extra armor since we're spending so much time fighting so many mobs. But as far as playing the druid, the balanced druid is going, I am enjoying it and it is still like pretty okay, not the best 
or most fun that I've had playing like a character in WoW or like playing a druid specifically. I much prefer the other specializations that druid has, but it's still okay and I'm having fun with it and we will see how it is going forward. So that was the 10th ghoul thing I needed, but I still need three more ribs. But I do notice we are on the edge right here where there are some skeletal raiders as well as some other mobs, but I think they're like way further away. But let's go ahead and just fight the skeletal raider really quickly. And I might run over and not fight more Ladam, but fight a couple more just to get a little bit of progress on this quest. And then we can go back to fighting ghouls. Watch the next quest we have be fight a bunch of skeletal raiders. That would be nice. I fought one and I see more Ladam walking this way, so I'm gonna go ahead and run over here a little bit. I definitely do not want to fight him yet. He is eight levels higher than me. It's gonna be a little bit. Some of these ghouls are definitely really interesting. I think it's one of the types of ghouls. I think it might be flesh eaters, but when they die, they spawn flesh eating worms, and I think normally it's like two of them that spawn. And here are some of those worms. They're all just like one hit and you have to hit them once. I think they probably only have like one or maybe five health, but definitely a little bit of like an interesting addition to fighting these mobs. And that was the last ghoul rib I needed so we can just run straight over here and talk to Abercrombie. And he says, ah, thanks. These will do just the trick. And he says, a few weeks ago, I was picking herbs far from my house and a band of ogres attacked me. I ran and I was forced to leave behind a crate of precious tools and herbs. After they chased me off, the ogres swaggered back to the ogre mound in southern Duskwood. I'm sure my crate is somewhere near the mound. Please, Athos, retrieve this crate from me, for I miss it sorely. So the next quest here is we can go ahead and go to the ogre mound, where should we have another quest there? We'll do that at around level 30, because that is a like level 30 area of this map. And for now, I'll go ahead and continue working on my Proving Your Worth quest. I'm really tempted to kind of Google this quest chain with Abercrombie because I don't remember it all too well, and by all too well, I have no idea what the ending is, so I kind of want to see what happens, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that as a mystery for me right now, and we will see how it unfolds together once I get to that point. So here at the Forlorn Row, we have a ton of skeletal raiders that we need to kill, as well as some healers and warders, so let's keep an eye out for them. There are some ghouls around here as well, and I'm going to avoid them because I'm kind of done fighting ghouls for now. But let's just work our way around this area, avoid more Ladam as best as we can, and we can work on this quest. And then we can go turn it into Swin, and then we can go work on the last quest we have in this area. So playing World of Warcraft vanilla right now has actually been a really good experience because the seasons of Mastery servers recently have merged with like the vanilla WoW like classic era servers that are like the permanent servers. So a lot of people have played season 1 of Seasons of Mastery and are currently waiting for like season 2 to begin have been playing on the classic era realms and I'm concerned for my health and safety. And I have a healing potion and I was at 22 health. I did not have the potion on my health bar. Just run this way a little bit. I see more Ladam there as well. And I think we are okay. And I don't see where he is, but I'm gonna go ahead and just eat and drink real quick. Oh, he's right there. They're gonna walk directly this way. I think he is. Let's go ahead and back up a little bit. We'll wait for him to pass. This is definitely a difficult quest to do just because more Ladam exists and you have to be constantly careful about his presence. Especially since this quest happens at a much lower level than the quest where you fight him at. But as I was saying, there are a ton of people just playing on the classic era servers right now since we're waiting for Seasons of Mastery Season 2 to begin. So it has been nice running around the world and seeing like so many extra people around. Because the Vanilla WoW version of the game definitely has quite a bit of people playing but is nowhere near as much as the amount of people that are playing when it originally came out. As you can expect from like any game, especially in the MMO release. But there are still quite a few people that do play the Vanilla Vow version of the game, and there's even more now playing on like these specific servers since it's not spread out across two. And there have been like a ton of dungeon groups that have been forming, so it might be a good time for us to be able to go into the stockades, which I've been planning on doing relatively soon since we're kind of getting to that level and we have a ton of quests, but we're going to have to get up exactly to the point that I want to be before we get in there. And I just got another ring from the Skeletal Raider here. So I have the Ring of Ironwell that has 4 stamina to spirit. 
I just got a Savannah Ring of Agility, which I don't think is going to be too good for us as a mage, but I'll go ahead and just equip it. It gives us six more agility, so our attack power with ranged weapons is increased, which is completely useless. We also get an improved chance to score a critical hit with all weapons, which is nice with we are doing our melee attack with our staff. It might work towards our wand, not entirely sure. And then we also have increased armor and chance to dodge attacks, which is going to be really good for us, especially with our spell casting, where if you dodge an attack, we won't get any knockback on our casting time. But speaking of Seasons of Mastery, I've been thinking a little bit more about exactly what I am wanting to do and I was pretty set on playing a human mage and I think I was kind of thinking about which specialization I wanted to do and I was leaning going fire spec and I've decided that I do want to go fire spec and I want to play through like playing a fire mage because I've mostly in like the old versions of WoW have played a frost mage and I really want to play through as especially a fire mage and I would also like to play through as an arcane mage at some time and when we go into the new season I may go just play through as a fire mage and if I reach level 60 I'll go ahead and start another character and I'll play through as an arcane mage. We have the Dawning Wood Catacombs down here. Let's go ahead and run down here because I think the skeletal warders that we need to fight spawn down here. I see some raiders. I'm going to go ahead and try to just pull that raider really quickly because I have a feeling there's going to be a ton of undead in the room and it looks like we only pulled him, which is good. Go ahead and try to get some distance on him. But I think once we run down there, we're going to be dealing with a lot. And I think like the catacombs kind of work where there's like a long hallway and then there's a bunch of side rooms where I think the warders probably spawned in the side rooms there so let's go ahead and work our way through here see what happens i see one right there that's actually in the main hallway not in the side room at all he's about to be in our range let's go ahead and get some frostbolt started on him here it doesn't seem like the warder has a ton of health even though he has like ward in his name which should presume he's kind of like tankier but he's less tanky than the skeletal raiders even though he's a level higher Looks like he does have some immunity to fire damage there, so it's a good thing we're a frost mage. We do only need to fight two more of them, and there's a ton over there. Oh, there's one right there. Let's go ahead and fight this one. And then once I finish fighting these two, I'm going to go ahead and run out of the catacombs and just finish the quest upstairs. It looks like he's immune to my frost attacks right now and my fire. So uh, what other options do I have? I think I have arcane. Uh, I have... I don't have anything, uh, this is not good for me, and it looks like his immunity went away there, so that was good. Let's go ahead and heal really quickly. And then we only need one more, so let's fight the Skeletal Warder really quickly, and then I want to get out of here ASAP. It looks like he just has like some magic and vulnerability that I do not want to deal with at all. So I might have to use my healing potion here, and it looks like he's immune to frost magic again. So let's go ahead and no, he is not. So I guess warder here means wards against magical attacks. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and then can fire blast. And then I just need a wand and it looks like I finished him off there. So let's go ahead and retreat, but I do need to be a little bit careful just in case some things spawn. But I've been thinking about it and I kind of want to do a full playthrough of every single DPS specialization in the game. And I feel like that I would feel like I have completed World of Warcraft kind of where I'll have played through so many different pieces of content in so many different areas of the world. And I will have done it on every single DPS spec that exists in the game. So like currently on this character for like my Let's Play series purposes, I am playing as a Frost Mage where I'm also playing a Balanced Druid on the side. So I want to play through every single DPS spec, so like Fire Mage, Arcane Mage, do Feral Mage again, and then go Paladin, Retribution Paladin, go through all the rogues, and just experience it all. Probably won't go to level 60 on every single one, but I can go ahead and just like experience kind of at least like the first like 30 or so levels of each one. But now I have completed that quest, definitely a little bit on the more challenging side since the mobs that we were fighting were about our level and a little higher than us and we did have to go into the catacombs area which was a very dangerous area. Let's go ahead and just run straight over here back to Svin's camp here and we can go ahead and turn in this quest and see what he wants us to do next in order to avenge his fallen family. So on our quest to fight Morbin Fell, we now have a new quest where we are going to go to Bishop Farthing in the Cathedral of Light and we're going to go ahead and give him Jitter's journal and tell him that we mean to face Morbin Fell. 
and that although Stormwind has forsaken Darkshire, Farthing is a kind soul and very wise. He may help you on your quest to save us. Your mission is perilous, but here are Yathis. With each passing hour, the shadows of Duskward grow even darker. So we can go ahead and take Jitter's completed journal, and we can actually read through it again if we wanted, and we can take it to Stormwind, which we will probably do next episode. For now, let's go ahead and return to Ravenhouse Cemetery, and we can finish the last quest that we have been working on in this area. So all we have left is the Night Watch quest that we have been working on, where we have already defeated 15 Skeletal Horrors, but I'm going to go ahead and fight a few more. And we need to fight 15 Skeletal Fiends, which so far we have fought 5 this episode. So let's go ahead and fight 10 more, and maybe fight a couple of extra Fiends, as well as a few Horrors on our way out of here. I feel like these grave robbers here, they are the only mobs that we have not fought in this cemetery yet, except for a few of the higher level ones. So let's go ahead and just fight them really quickly, just so we will have dinner once. And also, I think it's probably the ethical thing to do here. Since they have been all around here and they've actually attacked us once, let's go ahead and fight one of these carrying recluses as well. I really love Duskwood because I tend to really gravitate towards undead themes in video games. Not like necessarily like undead in the sense of like, you know, mindless zombies just like attacking, which is like a very popular like video game and like other media trope. But like undead where they're like minions of like a necromancer or like a Lich King. <laughs> where I really enjoy like different storylines that like involve them and Duskwood is one of those storylines where the undead here are like minions of Morven Fell and it's just something that I really enjoy and it's an atmosphere and like a vibe and like an experience that I really really enjoy playing through so I think because of that Duskwood is one of my favorite zones in the game just because of that experience that we are able to go through and the quest and the story that we are participating in as we are here. And I think that's kind of like a common idea and like favorability as well, where Duskwood tends to be some people's favorite zones in the game, a lot of people's actually, and it is because of that very reason where it's a very spooky, dark atmosphere, and the undead storylines here are just very fun and very intriguing. But on that note, that was the last skeletal fiend that we had to fight, so we have completed all three or like four quests that we have done here or five quests actually, where we turned in the juice to Abercrombie and then we got another quest from Abercrombie to fight some of the ghouls here, so we did that. And then we went and did Proving Your Worth. And we also got some ingredients for our totem of infliction from fighting those ghouls. And then we went over here, did Proving Your Worth for Swin, and we now have a new quest to go to Stormwind. And we also worked on our Night Watch quest. So we now have two quests we can go turn in in Darkshire, and one that we can turn in in Stormwind. So I'm going to go ahead and run back to Darkshire, because I forgot to set my Hearthstone to Darkshire. And I think I want to fight a few more mobs on the road on the way back to Darkshire, because I want to be sure that I reach level 20. 28 when I turn in these couple of quests. If I don't, I might go back out into the world and hunt a few more, but let's go ahead and just run back to town and we can fight any mobs that we see right off the side of the road here. So I was running along the road here and I see Stitch's gift from the Embalmer and this is a monster that I have been referencing for a very long time now and he is a giant abomination who just like the name suggests is a gift from the Embalmer which is one of the main enemies of this zone and he is working his way down to Darkshire and we can see here there are a ton of Night Watch members that are fighting him trying to block him off but this entire camp here is fighting them, but Stitches is way too powerful, and he chews right through that group, and he's going to continue working his way down here. He yells, Darkshire, I hunger. We have another member of the Night Watch here running down, so I'm going to go ahead and run in front of him here. Might fight a few more mobs just in front of him, and kind of just head back to Darkshire alongside him. Looks like that Night Watch member kind of just ran past him and Stitches ignored him. That might be the quest giver there. So they saved his life so people would be able to turn in the quest. But let's go ahead and keep running towards Darkshire and I'll keep an eye on Stitches and we'll see what happens next. We have another group of the Night Watch here that are standing guard against any of the threats and the Stitches on his journey to Darkshire is going to go ahead and probably face this group and face his wrath. Now that we are in town we can go ahead and turn in these two quests here. Let's go ahead and turn in the Night Watch. And we now have a new quest where the situation in Ravenhill is still grim. The safety of Darkshire is in your hands, Athos. I don't have enough watchers to keep the town safe. We need you to dispatch for Ravenhill yet again and rid the Eastern Mausoleum of 20 plague spreaders. 
doing so we will be able to get a 10 slot back but if we were someone who used bows or rifles namely hunters we would be able to get a quiver or an ammo pouch to store that and also increase our attack speed but this 10 slot bag is definitely going to be really nice and it's 25 yeah. silver and it is a level 30 quest so it's fighting plague spreaders i think we killed like a couple of them this episode but they are mostly in the mausoleum around the plague ghoul area there so we will go ahead and go back at some point and fight them and here I see Madam Eva for the Totem of Infliction. We can go ahead and turn this in and we can get our own Totem of Infliction. But I think this is just going to be something that I sell. So it would be a nice little bit of pocket change for us. And we are now one bar away from reaching level 28. So I think I'm going to go ahead and head back out here a little bit. And we can go ahead and fight a few mobs. And I just need one more skeleton kill in order to level up to level 28 and this skeleton will be the one that will do it for us. So we are now level 28, let's go ahead and head back to Darkshire and let's see what is going on with Stitches. Might run down the road a little bit and see if he is any closer as well, but maybe we'll just go back to Darkshire and hold out there because he is on his way to Darkshire and it is a little concerning what might happen once he gets there. It doesn't look like he's in Darkshire quite yet, so let's go ahead and go into our talent window here. And we picked Frostbite last level, so let's go ahead and pick Shatter, which will increase our critical strike chance of all your spells against frozen targets by an additional 10%. So it's now at 20%. Next time we put a point in there, it'll be 30%, but I think we'll go into Frostbite next. So I see Stitches here fighting all of the Watchers, so he's getting ever closer to Darkshire. So let's go ahead and retreat to Darkshire. So as we return to town, we see a town crier yelling, It isn't enough. Defenders gather in the center of town. Together we will stand against the undead monster. So it looks like Darkshire is aware of the threat that is happening. And the town crier, which is right here, I think we've seen him in like every time you've been in Darkshire. He is now yelling and he's rallying the defense. So the Night Watch will gather here in the town center and they will fight back against the monster that is heading this way. So I think the town of Darkshire and the Night Watch were aware of Stitcher's existence and the fact that he was coming down this road. And they were sending groups of the Night Watch to go down the road and to try to hold Stitches off and defeat the enemy. But no matter how many they sent, Stitches was able to get through them. So now it is time for like a last stand in Darkshire where the Night Watch, together, everyone here will fight against him. While we wait for Stitches to come, let's go ahead and come into the blacksmith really quickly, and we can go ahead and repair our armor and clear our inventory a little bit. And with the cleared inventory, I'm gonna go ahead and run into the inn really quickly because I want to set my hearthstone here, and we can go ahead and hearth back to Darkshire whenever we want. Talk to the innkeeper, make this in our home. I think this is like the fifth time we've set our hearthstone somewhere, so that is very fun. And I see a large group of the Night Watch kind of just sitting here by this tree, and of course there are a ton of Night Watch all around the town as well. I just came down the road to scout a little bit, and we have Watcher Jordan there, and he is now fighting against Stitches. Watcher Jordan is the Watcher that kind of just sits all along this road here, and just patrols up and down the road from Darkshire up to a point a little bit farther from there, and he is trying to hold off Stitches now, but it does not look like he is going to be able to. Even though he is four levels higher than the monster here, the monster is just so powerful. He is getting some good hits in, and is depleting the health of Stitches a little bit but alas I don't think it's going to be enough and stitches strikes down watcher Jordan as well and continues this march closer and closer to Darkshire so I think there's a little bit of the bug in the game right now where Stitches actually only continues moving if someone is like loaded in near him, which is kind of interesting. So I've been kind of waiting like a long time for him to get down to Darkshire and it's been quite a long time since I've started and he has slowly made his way here. So let's go ahead and keep loaded in with Stitches and we can go ahead and see what happens. He is so close to Darkshire right now. And the Night Watch actually haven't really formed a defensive perimeter yet at the entrance here. So it might be a little bit interesting. It might also be a little bit bugged in that capacity, which is unfortunate. But well, I ran away a little bit. But we can go ahead and see what happens when he arrives here at the town. The crier yells, the abomination has come forward. So here comes the Night Watch. It looks like a bunch of Night Watch 2 that were over there have come over here. Captain Althea Ebenlock is here as well. She says it'll take more than a rotting corpse to stop us. So we currently have three members of the Night Watch as well as their leader here at the entrance of Darkshire. 
and it looks like Stitches is about to be here. We can go ahead and join in on the defense here and we can go ahead and shoot some frost bolts towards Stitches and we can go ahead and join the defense of Darkshire and save this town from this undead abomination that has wandered all the way from Ravenhill Cemetery to here. He has a gift from the embalmer where the embalmer is kind of basically just launching an offensive against the town here. This is coincidentally a good time for us to level up our wand skill as well. I've already gotten two points and wands against Stitches, so let's go ahead and just aim for skill level 140 right now. So it looks like Althea Ebonlock joined the fight and she is spamming guards help me right now. It definitely seems like this is a little bit bug compared to what it used to be back in the day, but it's still very very cool to see this fight happen and Stitches has died. And we don't have the opportunity to loot him there because I don't think we dealt enough damage. But I don't think he drops too much anyways. I think in Seasons of Mastery, they actually added like a decorative like offhand item to him, which is cool. But beyond that, not too much going on here. But it's still like a very, very cool world event that happens. The town crier yells, the beast is slain, all is well in Darkshire. So that is the end of this where Darkshire is saved. However, we lost many, many good members of the Night Watch in the fight against him. But this is just like another reason why Dust Squid is such a good zone is like this is such a cool like random-ish world event that just happens that you can like observe and participate in and it's like so fun to see and just adds a ton of flavor to the zone and is one of my fondest memories of experiencing this for the first time back in the day. But on that note, let's go ahead and head into the end because I'm going to go ahead and call this episode good here. I had a ton of fun this episode. I actually played for a long time and I got a lot done, basically a whole level of experience gained this episode. But I hope you all enjoyed watching it while I was playing through it and I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Over Merper, drink some water, check your posture, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time in the world of Azeroth. Goodbye.